Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. Uh, one of the most popular videos that I've done recently is on my stubborn hatchlings and the uh, saga continues. So we're going to take another look at the stubborn hatchlings today. I'm still assist feeding uh, four of the hatchlings and the number of views and comments that it's got would suggest that um, I'm not the only one that has problems. Um, I think the more that you uh, see hatchlings and the more you get into the hobby uh, the more you take things like this in your stride but it can be particularly stressful for newcomers who've not seen this before and I do want to reassure you guys that it is uh, quite a normal process that uh, most breeders would go through and just to reassure you that sometimes it's not you it's the snakes uh, there are some tips and tricks uh, that you can use but it doesn't always work um, so you just need patience and persistence and um, we're going to see how we're doing with clutch number two. So let's go have a look at some of these stubborn babies. Okay so hides, they don't need to be too elaborate. Uh, these are black, don't let any light in and they have a single entrance. This is slightly larger and we have some Exoterra cave things. Uh, these have a slightly bigger entrance so I'm not so keen on those but they will do the job. So last ditch desperate measures to get these guys eating. Let's put hides in their tubs. There's a hide for that guy and I'm putting clips on the lid because what tends to happen with the hides is the snake actually goes on top and wedges itself in above the, the hide and can lever the roof of the tub off. They do have clips on them but that is not strong enough and snakes have been known to lever their way out so we put paper clips just over the top of the latches there to make sure the snakes can't get out. So that's a hide in for this guy and we will do that for all the snakes that have not yet eaten on their own. So there's a hide for this guy, see whether he wants to use that or not. this guy and again a clip so I did I do have five out of the eight that are already eating by themselves so just four hides needed I'm not going to give a hide if they don't need it and we'll give this guy here a hide as well this is the one from clutch number one that also has been assist fed so Let's see if that makes a difference to him as well. And we'll try and feed them tonight and see what happens. Just want to show you guys this, uh, this little fuzzy mouse down here in the corner. Live fuzzy mouse. Uh, left in overnight. And this thing has refused to eat again. Earlier on it was actually hiding from the mouse inside its water bowl. There seems to be a little bit of confusion here about the predator-prey relationship. Uh, this snake has um, got it backwards. put a little hide in with this snake as well even top up the water and the snake has eaten before but uh, is refusing consistently to eat again so let's just take a little look here guys uh, this guy is the one snake from Clutch 2 that uh, started to eat immediately by itself and you can see it's taken four meals this guy here has had to be assist fed uh, twice so let's have a look at the difference
you see this guy doesn't need a hide this guy has been given a hide and that has not worked either So these two snakes are exactly the same age, they are from the same clutch. This one is feeding okay and has f had four meals and uh, this one here has been assist fed twice just to keep it going. You can see it's perfectly healthy uh, but you can also see it is much much smaller than its sibling of exactly the same age. So that's just contrasting the two. And this guy will continue to be assist fed now. So that's just an interesting comparison. Here's another one that has also taken four meals by itself. And you can see that this one is also very chunky. Uh, they do grow fast. Once they start eating they do take off. This one has a dirty tub and needs cleaning. Once they start feeding they start pooing as well. And here's one that was assist fed once and then subsequently has started to eat by itself and has now had three meals. The first one was assist, it's now eating by itself. Again you can see how chunky this one is. Um, they take off as soon as they start eating by themselves they get the hang of it and they just seem to take off and, and grow. So no issues with these and we now have uh, five of the nine that are eating by themselves. Four of them are still being assist fed. And I think for many people, uh, if you're an experienced breeder, you're just going to say, well what's the big deal, this is just business as usual, uh, you just get on with it. And to some extent that's true. Um, the more experienced you are, the more things you see and the more things you just take in your stride. But I think for a first time breeder or somebody that's new to this, uh, it may come as a surprise that uh, regardless of what you do, uh, some of your hatchlings just refuse to eat. And we've seen the process that I go through. Uh, I put, put them on substrate, I gave them hides. Uh, I've tried various different kinds of foods, live, dead. We've tried drop feeding, uh, that hasn't worked. Uh, we put hides in for them, that didn't work. Uh, we shifted them around in the racks to uh, different slots and that didn't work. And so um, you just have to be systematic. Go through your systematic checks. Um, there are some tricks and tips that you can try. Uh, but sometimes, guys, it's not you. It's the snakes and they just do not want to eat. So, uh, as well as having a checklist, set yourself a time. Um, for me, it's around three weeks. Uh, if my hatchlings have not eaten at the end of three weeks, I do start to assist feed them. And the reason that I pick three weeks is, number one, I like to be systematic. I like to have a specific timetable that I'm working towards so that I know what the plan is. So about three weeks and I start to assist feed and the reason that I choose three weeks is uh, at that stage some of the smaller snakes are starting to get go noticeably downhill after three weeks and I do like to start assist feeding before they get too skinny uh, because it takes them a lot longer to recover if you don't. So around about three weeks is what I use and for those of you out there that have never seen this before, this is just part of the game. Um, yes, it can be stressful if it's your first time and you've never seen it before. Experienced breeders will recognise this and it's all part of the game. But as I said, be systematic, go through your checklist, uh, use all your little tips and tricks. Um, start ticking them off because sometimes it works and you will you will get a, a clutch where one will start eating and then a week later another one will start eating and with this clutch five of them are now eating four of them are still being assist fed despite my best efforts uh, but don't worry guys I'm not going to let these guys die they're in no danger um, I won't let that happen uh, again uh, because we've seen this before 
uh, we have experience it is less stressful than it perhaps is for a, a newcomer uh, but there is a video on how to assist feed on my uh, video channel here uh, so you can see that if you ever need to use it and sooner or later if you do breed snakes you will find a snake that needs assist feeding uh, in this case pretty much the whole clutch was difficult right from the start just part of the game no stress you just roll with it uh, be patient be persistent and these guys as you've seen will eventually take off so this is one that was assist fed and is now eating by itself this is one that was eating right from the get-go and we have four that are still being assist fed and finally uh, many of you have asked about the single snake from clutch one that was being successfully assist fed uh, no difficulties in getting him to eat when you put food into its mouth um, how many times do you have to do it before they do start eating by themselves well this guy has now taken uh, five assist feeds the last two I've barely managed to get the food into her mouth and she's coiled and finished the job all by herself but she is still actually refusing to catch and kill her own prey so that's five times um, this snake was hatched in June and here she is uh, she is still tiny uh, about uh, 90 grams I'd guess uh, she hasn't grown a great deal since she hatched and she's been left way behind by her siblings still perfectly healthy but that's the problem with assist feeding you don't want to uh, do it too often uh, so it's difficult to get enough food into them to make them grow uh, all you can do is to get enough food in them to keep them going until they eventually do decide to eat by themselves so this girl she's getting there uh, as I said the last two assist feeds she has actually uh, coiled the food immediately that I put it into her mouth I don't have to hook the food or shove it right to the back of her throat all I have to do is to get her mouth open and put the food in and she does the rest by herself so surprising that she isn't actually eating by herself yet but that's five meals she's had and I'm pretty certain that she will uh, start eating by herself fairly soon um, it's always a toss up between letting them go hungry so that they they are forced to catch their own prey and letting them get too skinny because they're refusing to eat so you assist feed so it's always a fine balance um, her siblings in the the rest of the clutch have now had more than 10 meals and they're probably three times as big as she is now uh, she's been assist fed five times over the same period and has grown very little but is still healthy and uh, we'll keep persisting with this girl and I'm sure she'll catch up in due course so that's just an update on uh, the one snake we were assist feeding uh, if anybody wants to know how many times we do it as many times as is necessary this girl is getting close I can see signs that she is going to start eating uh, but she just hasn't done so yet uh, you'll notice we did give her a hide as well just to see whether that made a difference and it didn't and I'm not saying it isn't a trick that you shouldn't use but they do have substrate in there and I found the ones that were very timid and assist feeding um, as soon as I put hides in they all disappeared into their hides and they haven't come out since they're not out hunting uh, they're not active they're just curled up in their hides doing absolutely nothing and it makes it very difficult for me to check on them uh, I have to open the tubs and check underneath the hides to make sure that they're still okay um, so that's one of the reasons why I prefer to try to use other tricks first before I put hides in. It is a trick that you can use and if it works, fantastic. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it doesn't appear to have made any difference at all. And in fact, uh, might have made things worse because they've 
just hidden away inside their hides and they're absolutely refusing to come out now so it does make life a little more difficult I'm not saying that you shouldn't try it absolutely you should try it it is uh, something that is known to work just that in this particular case um, it doesn't seem to have made a difference but I'm sure they will start eating by themselves uh, in their own good time okay guys so that's where we're at with these hatchlings we're whittling away and knocking them off uh, one at a time uh, there are now five of them that are eating and four of them still being assist fed uh, loads of different things that you can try but uh, in the end it's down to the snakes um, it is a process that everybody goes through and we try not to stress about it. Um, I let my snakes go for about three weeks before I do start to assist feed. I don't like them to get too skinny because it takes them uh, longer to recover. Um, I must stress that these are just my own thoughts and the things that I do. There's no right and wrong in this. You've seen that everything really depends on the snakes and uh, lots of different uh, thoughts and ideas on what to do, uh, what not to do. And of course, one of the things that um, I like to do with hatchlings is basically to leave them alone. Uh, the video is compressed, so it looks like I'm forever messing with the snakes, and I'm not. Um, I'm only messing with them when I video for you guys to show you where we're at. Uh, for the rest of the time, I do leave them pretty much alone, and that is, again, another strategy that you can use to try to get your hatchlings to uh, eat. If you leave them alone, uh, they tend to... Uh, start eating sooner so I am actually doing that although it wouldn't appear to be uh, that way from the video uh, it is condensed into just the action bits um, so sometimes it isn't you it's something that we all go through um, you just have to stick with it be patient and eventually they'll all come good as you've seen uh, and the hatchlings from clutch two now five of them are eating and you can see that some of them are actually starting to look quite chunky so no issues there it's just the other ones that we still need to get eating and we will persist and they will start eating in six months time we'll all have forgotten this until we're ready to do it all over again next season so uh, don't stress too much that's a load of hints and tips that you can try uh, but at the end of the day uh, the babies are going to be fine and uh, we'll see you next time